controversial statement about Dave Eggers' Zaytun. For the sake of my students, you know who you are. Here is your teacher offering an example of provocative argumentation. Feel free to disagree. Zaytun by Dave Eggers is the most pro-American book that you have ever read. <laughs> Let me first qualify what I mean by pro-American. Uh, Pro-American does not mean patriotic. Patriotism implies an unquestioning, dogmatic devotion to country, a sense that we can do no wrong. Patriotism tends to share borders with fanaticism, and that is not what I'm talking about. Pro-American, on the other hand, means having a personal investment in the future of our country. It means loving this place like you would love a child, a spouse, a parent, a sibling, or a best friend. It means unconditional devotion to helping us get better while being able to recognize when we've gone astray. We don't, after all, abandon our loved ones when they fail a test, or get fired, or suffer from an addiction. We stand up for that person we help that person get better, because without them, who would we be? Zaytun examines a dark moment in America's recent history, the irresponsible, uncivil, and wholly preventable catastrophe that followed Hurricane Katrina. Edgar's work gained much of its power by riling us up and making us angry. I know it made me profoundly angry, and I know it made many of you profoundly angry. But here's the important point. It makes us angry because Zaytun's predicament feels so fundamentally un-American. Though Zaytun's name may be hard to pronounce, he is a quintessentially American hero. He is modest, industrious, earnest, honest, determined, loving, and bold. Kathy's story is no less unique and no less heroic. Together, they stand as a poster couple for what makes America strong. Their ordeal at the hands of a society that they help to strengthen is cause for righteous anger. But we feel what we feel, seniors, because deep inside, we know that this isn't really who we are. That faith in our ideals and virtues may sound naive, it may sound romantic, it may sound Obama-esque, it may sound more suited to a politician's stump speech than to the classroom of a generally progressive Northeastern American high school. But Kathleen Zaytun's story transcends the partisan clash of red state and blue state politics because what makes them virtuous is what makes us virtuous as a country. Zaytun is a pro American work because it reveals our vulnerabilities and it exhorts us to be better. Because when we love something, we don't let it fail. Thanks. It's my pleasure now to introduce our keynote speaker for our assembly. Um, I'd like to introduce Dina Rudick, who is a photojournalist. Uh, she works for the Boston Globe. She is also an independent videographer, a uh, documentarian, a world traveler. Uh, Dina was in New Orleans during Katrina. She took photos. She's going to share those with us. And not so coincidentally, she also met her husband while there. So, uh, so she shares uh, both positive and negative memories from that experience. So let us give a few cheers to Dina Rudick. Thank you. My name is Tina, and I don't usually wake up at 5.45 to talk in front of 3,000 people, but it's a great day. So I'm going to talk about the and I'm happy to tell you a little bit about myself, but first I think we should just cut to pictures, right? That's what we're all here to see. Um, so I was there right after Hurricane Katrina, and 
it is true I did fall in love with my husband after the hurricane disaster, which is really a weird experience. Um, and I am happy to share these pictures with you. What I was really happy to do is read Zaytun. And just so you guys know, it's 1,000% right. I don't think it's can possibly 1,000% anything. But it is right on. And it brought back memories, sensory memories that I had let go of. So what you read is pretty much that um, in terms of the description of what everything looked like, felt like, and smelled like. Or arson, or somebody trying to stay warm. 
Meanwhile, when, this, when, the, electric, when the electrical grid is backed up, they were trying to pump out what's called ethanol, this stuff, which was you know, all over the whole city. They were trying to pump it back out. And that's ethanol. It's gross. I don't even know what's in it. This is a levy. Levies are not supposed to look like that. The water's supposed to be on that side. That's the Superdome. This is the site of any number of untold horrific events that may or may not have happened, but probably did. And this is what the Superdome looked like after they tried to clean it up. Smell horrible. And the cars had to be contaminated as they drove through, because they were coming back from St. Bernard's Parish. Here. SWAT team raids. You heard about sniper fire? Well, I saw the SWAT team going somewhere, and I was like, hey, I'm going with you. And I found myself in this housing development, looking down at all the four up these guns. These poor guys, they were just left behind. They were not snipers, but they were being um, evacuated by force at this point. After the waters receded, after a week or two, there were still lots of dogs. And you could just hear them, and you just, even when the waters were there, you could just hear the, the dogs you were hearing were barking dead dogs. And so there were no people around. It was hard to personalize this disaster in some ways because you could see, you know, I personalized the chair. I saw these like three little men, like, these chairs, like men and women sitting there. Um, but the dogs made me realize that there were, there were so many souls involved, and all those dogs that were scary were probably going to die. I don't know if you can read it, but that um, bumper sticker says, we're going to leave to the home. So I was just, I was finding the shadows of people everywhere I looked, but in their possessions. This is the night before. That's a roof. And again, we are really gorgeous in, in some ways. This says, don't try, I'm sleeping inside with a big dog, an ugly woman, two shotguns, and a claw. This is the saddest thing, one of the saddest things I've ever seen. This is a nursing home. And it was overrun. The people who lived there were not evacuated, and 34 died. So I walk through it, and you're seeing these bulletin boards with, you know, I love you, mom, or I have, have Father's Day, dad. But then you see the water line is like inches from the ceiling. And everybody just found people who were bedridden. Um, the, the owners of, the, of this place were charged, but the thing is, every time you have to evacuate really sick people, some of them die. So it's cost kind of analysis, and that's the kind of decisions people have to make. This is what happens when a hurricane meets a trailer park. So all these, this was a trailer park. And then people were evacuated to trailers. I'm sure they made them feel real secure. And people lived there as they knew for years in these trailers. So this is two hours outside of Northern Beach, and these people were relocated. And they didn't know what was in front of them, how long they'd be there, how they would work. And then people came back to look at their homes. And you know that how they used to describe the swish on the foot of the carpet? It was everywhere. And people just came back and they were trying to figure out how they could start their lives again, rebuild their homes. This man found his business to be leave. This is Hurricane Katrina. Uh, uh, this is Carol Lee's post to Katrina. And um, of several, it's probably three weeks after the And I haven't been back, but I really would like to go back and see it. And that is, those are my pictures. So, that I didn't realize, 
they were really almost forgettable because they were only witnessed by me. They were there in an abandoned city with journalists and wandering the streets largely by myself. And you know how it is when you see something when you're by yourself, it's hard to kind of keep it in memory, but if you experience it with your friend who's a witness to it as well, you guys kind of hold the memory for each other? Anyone? Can I get a yeah? Yeah. Um, well, so I experienced this kind of in the back. And then reading it in this novel, I was like, oh my god, this really happened. You know, this happened. Of course it happened. But it happened with some of the best words, and this is what it smelled like with them. They heard the dogs, too. And they heard the squish of, of you know, the mud underneath their feet. And they heard the helicopters. Um, so what I didn't know is the personal disasters that were taking place all around me. I mean, I was there because I too was in that Greyhound station. And I, I, I can't, I mean, I wish I could kind of reach back in time and found that I was not too sensitive to somebody. But um, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing to, to read something that reflects so clearly your experience and you've never met this person. So I just wanted to confirm for you guys that that book really did bring something to your life. And that really did happen. And I really look forward to meeting you all the panels if I get to see you and see any other questions. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Henri Smith, a singer from New Orleans who moved, to, who moved north after Katrina and has played with nearly every contemporary jazz and blues musician, is here and will be part of the arts panel and lab theater. Mitchell Duckoff and Mark Kramer, who are followers and join the piano on the media panel in the lecture hall. Superintendent David Fleischman will lead a discussion about religious tolerance in the choir room. Dennis Mayer, who was released from prison after serving 19 years for a crime he did not commit, will be here sharing the story in the auditorium. And many other distinguished guests have taken their time to help you understand the issues and stay tuned. Not the least of which are your fellow students, teachers, and parents who will be sharing their own stories and locations all around the school. So now, again, I'm going to have your attention back.